It is tournament time once again. We will break down the Louisville women's basketball team's journey to the Final Four on this episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Run Your Pool. March Madness is here, and Run Your Pool has a better way to create your bracket. RunYourPool.com, the premier sports pool hosting service. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone, and I do some PA and Nazi work for the University of Various Sports. As always, I want to take this time to personally thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, the Locked On Global Podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. The selection show was yesterday. The Louisville women's basketball team secured a one seed in the Wichita region. We will break down their journey to the Final Four um, first by talking about how it's a favorable draw, but they still need to handle business. We will then go a little bit more in-depth on their opponents. And then finally, we'll transition over into football as the football program picked up a four-star commitment in Jalil McClain. We will talk about what that uh, 2023 wide receivers commit means for the recruiting class. Starting out with women's basketball, um, as I mentioned, the Cardinals secured a one seed, which was kind of on the fence. Uh, Baylor losing to Texas in the Big 12 championship on Sunday um, seemed to be like it may have been the deciding factor. But when the uh, uh, tournament committee president was um, interviewed after the uh, bracket release, the uh, committee president was very vocal about the support of Louisville and um, or not necessarily the support of Louisville, but um, you know, the overall advocating for what the Cardinals had done. And I you know, paraphrasing a little bit, saying that the Cardinals hadn't done anything to be taken off that one line. So good to know for the Cardinals to be on the one line um, in the Wichita region. It is a region that is a uh, Filled with some solid teams, obviously. The number one overall two seed, Baylor Bears. Um, the three seed is the Michigan Wolverines. Four seed, Tennessee Volunteers. Five seed, Oregon Ducks. So on and so forth. And, um, you know, kind of looking at things, I think that the Cardinals got a favorable favorable draw. I think that um, ultimately, if it came down to it in the Elite Eight, I think the Cardinals would rather play Baylor than they would a healthy Connecticut team with a healthy Paige Beckers, a healthy as he fud, so on and so forth. Um, UConn playing very, very well. One of the, you know, playing as one of the better teams in the country over the past month or so. Uh, but Baylor, obviously, very solid as well. I think that the Bears are a little bit less tested than the UConn Huskies. Uh, they have played Texas three times, Iowa State twice, uh, two teams that finished in the AP top 10, I believe, or they were going into conference championship play. But overall, UConn, a, a much more rounded schedule. But that is what it is. The The Cardinals will um, you know, open up with Albany on um, Friday at the KFC Yum Center. Uh, I don't know necessarily know if there's a time yet, um, but we'll break that down kind of in the next segment. But overall, very, very solid um, for the Cardinals. There were a couple teams that I ultimately wanted to um, you know, kind of avoid UConn being one of them. I, I think that Indiana as a three seed is also a team that could have given the Louisville some fits. Kentucky, I mean, that whole, um, you know, the, the NC State Regional was, was it, it, I mean, it's an inc it's incredible, you know, NC State, uh, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Indiana, UConn, so on and so forth. Um, I, I think that Tennessee being the four seed in this regional was a little bit interesting. I I could have sworn that in Charlie Cream, uh, in his last uh, uh, bracketology update, and for those who are not aware of who Charlie Cream is, he is the ESPN women's college basketball bracketologist, kind of the Joe Lunardi of uh, women's college college basketball bracketology. I could have sworn that Tennessee was still on the three line. Um, I had seen uh, Tennessee in a couple of different, um, you know, mock 
brackets that they were on that three line, but ultimately they were, um, you know, fell down to the four. I think the four or five matchup with Tennessee and Oregon is an interesting one. Uh, we'll kind of break that down a little bit here uh, in, in the next segment. The eight nine matchup poses some questions as well. Nebraska and Gonzaga, two teams that if you're not necessarily aware or, or too kind of a too much affiliated with women's basketball, you're still kind of getting into um, learning about it and stuff like that and how good the teams are. Two teams that fly under the radar, and I think both could possibly pose some challenges for Louisville in this field. Um, some other teams that I wanted to make sure that uh, the Cardinals pretty much uh, steered clear of. Uh, Maryland as a four seed. I'm not really sure why, but every time I watch Maryland, it seems like um, that's a team that would, would give Louisville some fits. LSU as well. Ultimately, I think that the Cardinals control their own destiny. I think that that's kind of the, mes the message that I want to portray is that Ultimately, this is a pretty solid draw. You're going to have some solid teams in your region, um, but overall, this is um, one of those to where the ceiling is obviously winning a national title. I think the four, you have to at least make the Elite Eight, especially with this bracket. Um, and obviously, the team has aspirations to go even further than that. It's a solid draw that Louisville is probably the favorite to come out of, uh, but at the end of the day, you still have to handle business because there are some you know, some tough teams in, in this bracket and not just, you know, the two, three, four and five. I mean, you talk about the six seed being a BYU team, excuse me, that was ranked top 15 pretty much all season long. Uh, speaking of BYU, Gonzaga uh, dethroned the Cougars in the uh, West Coast Conference Championship final. So that was an interesting matchup there. Uh, Belmont is the 12th seed against Oregon. Uh, for those who think that Oregon could be an interesting Sweet 16 matchup, I agree, but you can't overlook the Belmont Bruins, who gave Louisville a run for their money at the KFC M Center earlier this season. Um, Ole Miss and South Dakota is an interesting 7-10 matchup. Uh, they both would struggle against Baylor in, in the next round, but ultimately it, it's an overall sounded bracket. Um, I, I like the Cardinals' draw. I think that um, – you know, NC State kind of got the short end of the stick when it comes to the overall draw. I think that they got the the, the toughest bracket thus far. Um, but when you look at the other ones, I think that Stanford Stanford's draw is pretty solid as well. Texas, LSU, and Maryland being the 3-4 or the 2-3-4. And then Virginia Tech is the 5 seed with a very tough Florida Gulf Coast as a 12. You know, that's, that's a, tough, a tough draw. Iowa, um, Iowa State, and Arizona – as the two, three, four in the um, in the in the South Carolina, the Greensville regional. So overall, when you kind of look at the top seeds, I, I feel like outside. You know, you look at Louisville Baylor. I mean, yeah, it's very you know a heavyweight um, thing like that. Uh, it's a very you know heavyweight uh, one two matchup. But ultimately, I, I think that Michigan is a good draw for the Cardinals, considering what um, what happened early on in the season. So ultimately. You know, I, I keep coming back to the point of you you have to handle business because we've seen it to where some teams have, have you know, gone through it. I mean, this is March. This is um, where, you, you know, we, we saw when Louisville played Miami in the ACC tournament quarterfinals a little over a week ago. Any team can win on any given day. If you don't show up for even a quarter, then, you know, you could be on the losing end of things and your season. Now your season could be over just like that. So um, glad that the Cardinals got the one seed. I ultimately – ultimately thought that at the end of the day they were going to get one um especially with uh baylor losing if baylor would have won the big 12 i i think it would have been flip-flop but uh, i digress the only uh, difference is um the cardinals may be facing off with michigan um rather than you know possibly oregon slash tennessee so solid draw for the cardinals you still have to handle business but you have to like um how the bracket um you know, unfolded for the team from the Derby City. I want to take the time now to kind of you know, break it down a little bit more, kind of go into the possible opponents, um, look at the journey that the Cardinals would likely have to face or a possible journey that they might have to face um, going into, um, you know, overall trying to get back to the final four. Uh, we'll do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Run Your Pool. March Madness, it's here. 
That means you need to start thinking now, or you should have been thinking a couple weeks ago, and you really have to be thinking about it now where you're going to be running your brackets. Don't panic uh, because Run Your Pool has you covered. Along with standard brackets, it offers game types like Survivor or Pick X, which are really fun. They have options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks. All stuff you won't find at ESPN or CBS. Clearly, we believe Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves. There's no truer test than that. If you want to play against us, against us for a shot at a cash prize up to $1,800, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for a $10 off coupon for your custom pool. Once again, that's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize up to $1,800. We look forward to seeing you there. Also, want to take this time to talk about our friends over at Stat Hero. Um, I like look. I love March Madness. It's my favorite time of the year, and I love the brackets. But sometimes I can't remember the last time I actually went deep or even won any money in like a company pool or anything like that. Um, this year, you need to be hedging your bets with Stat Hero's NCAA Pick'em contests. Um, the single game Pick'em's pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Um, in addition to the Pick'em games, they also have dozens of lineups you can comb through to take on head-to-head. It's the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fixed. Uh, this is what Daily Fantasy Simply was made to be. So sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on. Use the promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on while using the promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, thanks again for making Locked On Global your first listen every day. Make sure to check out Lock It, or I'm sorry, Locked On Bracket Breakdown uh, today, right here on the Locked On Global podcast feed and YouTube channel. College basketball experts Chris Gordy, Andy Patton, and betting expert Lee Sterling give you in depth breakdown on every matchup. Transitioning a little bit into a little bit more of an in depth approach. Uh, looking at the possible journey that the Louisville women's basketball team may have to go through to uh, ensure that they get to the Final Four. It starts with the 16th seeded, um, um, 16th seeded Albany. Uh, I think I think their mascot is the Danes. I could be wrong. Um, the Great Danes, Albany Great Danes. That that sounds right. I could be wrong though. But ultimately, that's a matchup that you would assume that Louisville wins. Obviously, you can't take any um, team for granted in the NCAA tournament. But I, I think that you would probably feel comfortable with predicting a Louisville win against Albany in the first round. That would set up a round of 32 matchup with the winner of eight seeded Nebraska and ninth seeded Gonzaga. Two teams that I mentioned in the last segment, uh, both should be um, underdogs against Louisville, obviously, but could cause some mayhem in the brackets. I think that if you were looking to um, possibly pick which team you wanted to play. I think Louisville would likely go with Gonzaga, although they are a great three-point shooting team. They have been less tested throughout the year. They played Stanford close one matchup, uh, got blown out the second one, uh, got beat by a BYU twice throughout the regular season, but like I mentioned, it defeated the Cougars in the um, West Coast Conference um, championship game. So ultimately, Gonzaga is a team that I feel like has been less tested. They could you pose a, a problem for Louisville, considering I think the one issue with the Louisville defense that they are continuing to work on is a perimeter defense. So a team that's very, very good at shooting the ball could you know, pose to be a big problem. Nebraska, on the other hand, I feel like it's flying under the radar. They're a very solid eighth seed. Uh, Standings-wise, uh, they finished, I think they finished sixth in the conference, but you have to think. I mean, the top five teams all were ranked inside of the top 15 heading into conference championship play. So, um, you know, Big Ten, very top-heavy. Uh, Nebraska was 11-7 and seven in conference. They're only three games back from first place in the Big Ten. So this is a team that's beaten Michigan twice. They've defeated Indiana. Uh, they made it to, I believe, the conference semifinals to where they lost against Iowa. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like they've defeated um, – I feel like they've defeated Iowa at some point this season. No, they um they lost uh, by ten uh, pretty much every every time to Iowa. But this, I mean, this is a team that's beaten Michigan by twenty one points back in on January. They've defeated Michigan back in um you know back in March. So I mean, you have to look at this matchup as okay. Nebraska is a very very solid team. 
um, that, you know, could be an interesting matchup. Uh, you know, Jazz Shelley, uh, 5'9 sophomore, um, you know, averaging 13, 6, and 5 while shooting about 43% from the field. You know, she would have to be the focus of the Louisville defense, kind of the pinnacle um you know, factor there, the prominent factor in the Nebraska offense. Very solid matchup that I think, um, you know, Wolf would ultimately win. But at the end of the day, you really can't overlook that because Nebraska has shown that they can defeat top teams, and they will if you give them the chance. Assuming that they get through to the Sweet 16, you you would probably bet that they would play either the four or the five. Um, that would be either Tennessee or Oregon. But like I mentioned, um, Belmont being the 12 seed, could be a bracket buster in the um, you know the Wichita region against the Oregon Ducks. Uh, Belmont's a team that has uh, you know, played the Louisville tough in the um, KFC Yum Center earlier in the non-conference slate. Um, you know, we'll start out with Tennessee. Tennessee, I feel like probably would have been a three, maybe even a two, had they not kind of struggled to end the season. Uh, back in February, I mean, we're talking about a lo- uh, big loss at Florida, loss to UConn. Um, lost to Alabama, lost to South Carolina, lost to LSU. I mean, they actually probably lost uh, you know, the majority of the games in February. And then you turn the page in, um, in March, and they lose in the semifinals to Kentucky in the SEC uh, tournament. So, you know, uh, Tennessee's a team that's very balanced. Uh, they really don't have one player that kind of stands out. Um, it's pretty much a balanced approach, kind of, a, kind of like Louisville. I think that if you had to play either Tennessee or um, Oregon, I think that the Cardinals would – it's hard to really – it's hard to say what they would rather have because, you know, Tennessee has size as well. Uh, Tamari Key, six foot six, averaging 10 and 8. Um, you know, Alexis Dye, six foot nine and 7 averages and, and so on and so forth. So Tennessee would be a, a solid matchup. Oregon, the issue with Oregon last year that a lot of people kind of felt a little bit uneasy about when the Cardinals played them in the Sweet 16 was, well – or, you know, guard play, you know, Louisville has the advantage, but it's the size of the Ducks that really, you know, make you wonder of, you know, how well is Louisville going to be able to initiate their offense? Well, in the Sweet 16 of last year, it was a matter of kind of isolating the bigs, isolating the post players and letting the guards run in transition. Defensively, they really made it tough for Oregon to get anything going in the, you know, in the front court. Uh I'm probably pronouncing this, this wrong. Nayara, Nayara Sabali, a six foot five junior, averaging fourteen and seven. Uh, you know, six foot five, and then right next to her in the front court, you have Sedona Prince, six foot seven junior, averaging nine and four. So they do have a lot of uh, you know, pow pow, uh, leading the team with thirteen four and three. She's probably uh, I think that there was a player that was missing or miss uh, you know missed that game against the Cardinals last year. Um, But ultimately, I think that Louisville would probably be favored against both of those teams. Pretty solid matchups, though. However, it's the Elite Eight where everyone kind of has their uh, eyes set on. If it's Michigan, then you had to feel good about the Cardinals' chances considering they beat Michigan by nearly 30 points back in December. Baylor, on the other hand, poses a little bit of a different, um, you know, a little bit of a different challenge. A team that's, you know, won a lot of games. You know, they're 25 and 5. I mean, they're led by All American Nalissa Smith, averaging 22 and a half and 11.6 rebounds. Um, you know, two time Big 12 Player of the Year, 6 2 senior. You would have to assume that um, Emily Ingsler would be tasked with guarding. Um, it, it's going to be a tough road for the Cardinals, and it, it's just a matter of taking everything, um, you know, a, a game at a time and um, focusing on everything, uh, focusing on every opponent in, in front of you. So, um, you know, very solid draw for the Cardinals. It, it's going to take some a string of good performances. We'll talk about, you know, the upcoming matchups as they get closer. But we'll finish the show out today with news of a four-star football commitment in Jalil McClain. Uh, teammate of quarterback commit Pierce Clarkson. We will discuss, um, you know, the impact that has on this recruiting class uh, along with what he projects to be at the next level. Here in just a second after we talk about our friends at Bet Online, It's that time of the year again, Cardinal fans. College basketball's March Madness is here. Selection Sunday was yesterday. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info, and it remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news. It's not just basketball, though. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today 
or use your mobile device to learn more about the needs, or I'm sorry, the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. It was an eventful day on Friday, on Friday, on Sunday. Um, selection show for the women's basketball team. They got a one seed. Softball uh, came back to run rule Indiana at Ulmer Stadium. Baseball won the series against Michigan with a big victory in the rubber match of game three. Um, but perhaps, you know, some of the biggest news came in four-star commitment, uh, Jalil McClain, who is the seventh commitment of the Flyville 23 class for the Louisville Cardinal football program. A solid commitment for Louisville, um, one that hopefully will continue to, you know, uh, you know, set the momentum, a uh, four-star wide receiver, uh, teammate of quarterback commit Pierce Clarkson. He is ranked as the 305th best recruit in the 2023 cycle. Um, according to 24 seven sports composite, uh, he's actually listed as an athlete on the site because he plays both ways. He's a defensive back as well, but projects to be a wide receiver at the next level. Five foot 10, 180 pounds. Um, from Bellflower, California, obviously plays for St. John Bosco, that great program out in California. And he has a, a lot of solid offers to his name outside of Louisville, has Arizona, Arizona State, Michigan State, Oregon, Pittsburgh, Texas, USC, and others. So it's not one of those situations to where it's a four-star that doesn't necessarily have that impressive of an offer list. I mean, they, they, he has all of the big boys um, you know, pursuing him on the recruiting trail. So, I mean, watching his film, you know, plays a lot in the slot. Um, five foot 10 is a matchup nightmare for opposing safeties and linebackers specializes in getting behind the coverage into the secondary and the second um, wave of the defense. I, I think that his, his footwork is pretty solid, a little bit underrated. Um, the routes that he runs are, are very open. You see a lot of um, you know broken coverages because of his speed. I think he has a lot of twitchiness off the line of scrimmage to where he creates a lot of separation um, with his 5'10 frame. Not the, you know, the biggest guy, but has a ton of athleticism for his frame as well. Uh, I love the connection between uh, Clarkson and McLean, you know, on the field, and hopefully that can translate over into the college realm as well. Um, but from a skill set point of view, you know, Louisville is looking to continue to improve their wide receiving core um, and, and bringing a, a dynamic recruit, recruit like Jalil McLean in as the first uh, wide receiver commit of the cycle is is a very big positive for the Cardinals right now. Louisville. Has seven commits in the class, and you know the rankings are going to fluctuate as the the bigger programs, you know, start focusing more on 2023 recruiting. But as of right now, with seven commits, the Cardinals are ranked eight in the country in the 2023 recruiting team rankings, which is a tremendous feat. Um, two things, obviously, like I mentioned, um, those rankings will will change, so it's likely that they don't finish top ten, but it's a very good sign that they're there right now. Um, secondly. You know, you have to hold on to these guys until signing day. You know, getting them to commit is only half the battle. We saw with Chubba Purdy a couple years ago and some other guys throughout the past however many years that you, know, you have to make sure that, um, you know, you get the signature on the uh, letter of intent. And that's when um, you can start to, uh, you know, release your breath and stuff like that. But you have to continue to recruit them because at the end of the day, we're in what, March mid-March and signing day is not until December. So a long way to go, but still very solid that not only do you have Pierce Clarkson, but you have one of his highly rated recruiting teammates. I think that this adds a, a good um, dynamic to the offensive side of recruiting. We talked about how Scott Satterfield company did a great job of starting off this class with a ton of defensive back commits now um, you know, with the need at wide receiver coming at the end of this season, adding a guy like Joel McClain is a very, very solid option. So at the end of the day, this is a big commitment for a couple of reasons. Number one, on the field, I think he's very solid. Um, number two, you you get um, you know a, a teammate of Pierce Clarkson's, which is good for a chemistry side of things. But number three, you know, it bodes well in, in terms of the recruiting trail for this class because, you know, as, as the old saying goes, top talent wants to play with top talent. And the more highly rated guys you bring into a class, the better your chances are of landing some some other highly rated rated guys. You know, there's some guys in California that Louisville's going after that, you know, having two highly rated guys out of California 
may ended up may end up helping them, um, you know, get over the top of the recruitment and you know reel some of these guys in. So hopefully, McLean's commitment can continue the momentum for this program moving forward, especially after Amari Borden, four-star wide receiver from Florida, committed to Stanford over the weekend. So McLean's uh, commitment was very big for the Cardinals on a couple different fronts. But um, overall. Um, thanks again for making Locked On Global your first listen every day. Tomorrow will be a, a little bit more about season reviews for the men's basketball team. We'll have a mailbag segment as well. Uh, do yourself a favor, make your second listen. Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Um, before we get out of here, a, a couple quick shout-outs. First, the Cardinal Sports Zone podcast, the most recent episode dropped um, over the weekend. You can check that out at cardinalsportszone.com. Also, check out the recent live stream from the show um, yesterday. Um, and then also the Off the Walls podcast. Um, you know, Great stuff from Brian Trent there and all the other guys at the State of Louisville. Um, check out the women's basketball content from uh, Chrissy Banta and Dave Skull at uh, the Crunch Zone. A lot of great content for women's basketball um, as we get closer to the women's basketball national tournament. So, um, But that's going to wrap up this Monday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. Have a good start to your week. Go Cards, and we will see you right back here.